G'day from beautiful Perth, Western Australia, in what will be my penultimate What the Drivers Drove video from the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And there was one car that was super popular with a number of drivers and team principals, and I think it'll be a manufacturer you've never heard of. For the full story, hang around. The Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Well, it was my 100th F1 race as an accredited photographer, but I won't dwell on that in this video. Instead, I'm going to tell you what all of the 20 drivers drove, starting off with Valtteri Bottas. He drove a blue Giulia Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio. Yes, this is the souped up version, the higher spec version. And interestingly, the Giulia comes equipped with state of the art traffic sign recognition and an intelligent speed advisor which alerts drivers to changes in the legal speed limit. His teammate Zhou Guan Yu was driving the exact same car with a red paint job. And the Yas Marina circuit is great for doing these videos because every single driver has a car park and their name is on that spot. That meant I didn't have to hang around outside of the paddock and watch what the drivers arrived in, which is the case with, say, tracks like Interlagos in Brazil and Mexico City. Next up, Pierre Gasly arrived in a Honda Civic Sport. This was, uh, I thought, one of the more ordinary cars driven by the drivers. And on Sunday, I can tell you, I was out there waiting for him. And he rolled up and found that his car park had been taken by one of the media shuttle buses. And he wasn't very happy about it. So he just simply parked his car across the shuttle bus. Truth be known, the bus could get out. It just would have to do a multi-point turn. And of course, the Alpha Tauri F1 team is powered by Honda. So was Yuki driving a Honda? No. He was driving a competitor's car, a Toyota RAV4, white in colour, looking like this. And we were in Abu Dhabi and there's one quirk that drives me crazy there. WhatsApp doesn't work on your phone for calls unless you have a VPN. But luckily I had Surfshark so I could set my phone to say Australia, wait for it to connect and that enabled me to make those calls on WhatsApp. What is Surfshark? It's an app and a browser extension that allows me to position any of my devices anywhere in the world. It provides me with an added level of security. Plus, if you're a Netflix user like I am, I've also got Stan and a couple of others, I can position my device in different parts of the world, enabling me to access new content. And right now, if you click on the link in the description below, not only will you save 85%, you'll get three months extra free, plus a money back guarantee. If you use the promo code Kim. Thank you, Surfshark. Now, I can hear you asking, what was this car that so many drove in Abu Dhabi? It was a GAC. Fernando Alonso was driving a GS8 320T, gray in color. Now, GAC stands for Guangzhou Automobile Group Company. It's Chinese state-owned. They produce just over 2 million cars a year. And the model that Fernando was driving was a seven-seater, configured 232. And it comes in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. And what about his teammate, Esteban Ocon? Exactly the same model, just a different color. And how long was the drive to the track for these drivers? Well, I don't think any were staying at the W Hotel, which butts up against the track. The reason why? It's so noisy, there's thumping music until 4 a.m. pretty much every night. So the drivers tend to stay a little bit further away. Some stay on the island, and there's a number of hotels within a very short you know, 500 meter range, including a brand new Hilton. There's a Rotana, there's the Crown Plaza, there's a couple of others too. Even the Warner Brothers, which I stayed at a little bit further away than those I just mentioned. But a lot of them stay well off the island and take a drive of about 25 to 35 minutes, in which case they get to enjoy these motor vehicles for a little bit longer. Next up, the Ferrari drivers. And were they in Ferrari Romas, which they've driven, um, I'm guessing, about three quarters of the races this year? No, they were not. They were driving Alfa Romeo Stelvios, a white one for Charles and a black one for Carlos. Next up, a driver who drove in his final F1 race. And on the Saturday night, he decided to do a run with anyone in F1 that wanted to join him. It was quite an amazing experience, and I'll go into more detail in a video I'll do shortly talking about Seb's final race. And it was great to be out on track with him. And over the weekend, I came across a number of fans who were obviously smitten with the man, including this gentleman here, who had Seb's signature 
tattooed on his arm. But the Aston Martin driver wasn't driving an Aston Martin. Instead, he was in a white Nissan Patrol. And while we're on the subject of Seb, I should mention that on the Sunday, all the drivers presented on track for the end of year photo. Seb was the last one out and he went and fist bumped every single driver before he took his spot on the back row on the very left hand side as you see this image. Now I can't work out why those drivers were so squashed on the left and that you have uh, Max pretty much separated by a big margin in the middle. At Lance Stroll, he was driving an Aston Martin as he's done for most of the year and yes, it was a DBX. Just mentioned Seb was leaving F1. Mick Schumacher also leaves F1. Maybe he'll return in the future. You never quite know. Look at Nico Hülkenberg, who is replacing Mick Schumacher. So Kevin was driving a silver Toyota Land Cruiser. Great cars for that part of the world because, of course, there's so many sand dunes and you can get off road and really have some fun. And teammate Mick Schumacher was in an Alfa Romeo Stelvio. This wasn't the Quadrifoglio souped up version. Another driver leaving us in 2022 is Daniel Ricardo. The Australian was driving a white Toyota Land Cruiser GXR and so was Lando Norris and they parked side by side only the number plates were different and I'm not sure why but while we were doing this group shot Lando got up from his seat and moved that sign about 30 centimeters towards him. I can't tell you why I thought it was pretty much in the center but obviously Lando thought otherwise. Next up Lewis Hamilton who wore these four outfits in on the four consecutive days of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and he's always a stylish trendsetter. His choice of vehicle was a GLS 450, the 4Matic, white in colour and just like the McLaren drivers his teammate George Russell was in the exact same car and at this point I'm going to remind you that I'm giving away a signed Kimi Raikkonen print. To enter all you have to do is be a subscriber on YouTube and then go and have a look at my last video as long as you do it before the 29th of November because that's the day that I'll be picking a winner and sending this beautiful hand signed print from Kimi to one of my lucky followers. Next up, let's look at what the Red Bull drivers were driving. And thankfully, it was a deviation away from the Honda Civic Type R's that they've driven so many times this year. And I thought this was a, an interesting choice of vehicle, Dodge Chargers. These sell for anywhere between 32,000 US and 89,000 in the United States. Uh, and they will be discontinued in December of next year. We had Max in a white one and Checo in a black one. And finally, the Williams drivers, both driving GAC 320T GS8s, the exact same cars that the Alpine drivers were driving, and Alex Albon in a black one. And what was Nick DeVries driving? I can't tell you, but I did see him very wet and soggy at the end of the night on Sunday, because uh, the tradition is when you go from one team to another, the team that you're leaving presents you to the other team at the last race in some sort of interesting fashion. Now I did see this going back a few years ago where a mechanic was absolutely slaughtered as you can see here with food and all sorts but Nick was spared a lot of that. He was just chucked into the marina, got out wet and then transported down on a tyre trolley to his new team Alpha Tauri. It's a tradition that I love. With a couple of seconds still up my sleeve, let me run through what a couple of the team principals were driving. Andreas Seidel had a grey GS8. Fred Vassa was in this blue Alfa Romeo. Mattia Bonotto was in a Maserati Levante GT. And I'm pretty sure that that or the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll would have been the most expensive cars parked in that car park, which sits just a short walk from the paddock. And if you're wondering how you get to meet the drivers, say, at that car park or getting into the swipe gates of the paddock, it's pretty much impossible unless you have a paddock pass. And even then you couldn't enter the paddock from there. You'd have to come through the other gates and walk all the way through. So it's one of the trickier races to get to meet an F1 driver. Two more to go, Franz Tost driving this Toyota RAV4. And finally, Gunter Steiner, Haas team principal, who signed 50 of this magnificent shot of him at the Dutch Grand Prix. And it's now available on sale for you at kimillman.com. Great Christmas present and uh, a significant proportion 
portion of the money that you invest in this will go to Careflight, a charity chosen by Gunter in Australia. They do some great work. Oh, and what was he driving? This GS3 GAC. So this is a smaller model of the GS8 made by GAC, and it was launched in the Philippines going back in October of 2019. So it's a reasonably new release of a vehicle. I mentioned earlier that this was my penultimate F1 Drivers Drove video. I've got one more to come, and it will be the best of from the entire 2022 season. Hey, can you please hit the like button? Yes, it's uh, down the bottom there. Yeah, just press that, thank you. And subscribe if you haven't done so, so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you become a member, you get a whole host of extras for free. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com. For a wide range of merchandise, go to KimElman.com, where you'll also find F1 photo books, driver signed prints by drivers and team principals, and wall art. And for my best pictures live from the track, and all during the week, well, the coming weeks, I've got plenty of them off, Head to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Yeah, I can go. No, we're here for the fourth year. No.